Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Remember, if you have enjoyed watching us through the Hogwarts Legacy 10 day countdown, okay, and we are on day eight, please subscribe and like our videos. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it. Please leave some comments if you have some things you would like us to go over. We definitely will. And remember, it's State of Liz to subscribe to. And you can also look up our gamer tags, mine is State of Liz, and Rory's is Roar of Skywalker. So definitely check us out. We do um, some gameplay as well on all of our favorite games. But today what we are doing, we are going over that very first showcase for Hogwarts Legacy. It gives us some gameplay, some tours through it. We are not going to do the whole 46 minutes of it. Of course, you can always look it up on the pre-order sites on your different consoles or um, on the Microsoft Store. You can definitely look that up and watch the whole thing through. And of course, you can always look up the showcase on YouTube as well. But there's just certain parts we're just going to go over, discuss what we thought of them, and definitely excited to get started. So once again, I'm Liz. And this is Rory. All right. So we are going to get this started. <laughs> Yeah, there's a new thing. Oh, there's something I didn't see. Just the detail is just, you can tell so many people love making it. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first Hogwarts Legacy gameplay stream. I'm Chandler Wood, community manager here at Avalanche Software, and we've got a lot of really exciting stuff to show you today. But before we get into showing you the game and gameplay, I have a few wonderful guests that, that I need to introduce you to. Uh, first up, we have our community guest host. He brings you the latest and greatest in Hogwarts Legacy content. Uh, he's the local Merlin conspiracy theorist. Uh, guilty as charged. Yes. <laughs> One half of Expecto Go, yeah. James Whitehead. Uh, thanks, Chandler. Uh, yes, um, <laughs> I'm James Whitehead of Expecto Go, bringing you guys the latest and greatest in Hogwarts Legacy <laughs> content. And uh, I am one half of Expecto Go, the better half, uh, my wife Sue. Uh, represent that other house. Yes, so, and um, I'm excited heard to be here. And their you, YouTube channel. Uh, Definitely Avalanche subscribe to them. Expect to go. They have tons of details and tons <laughs> Welcome, of like behind the scenes stuff. Thank you for being here. Uh, and we've got they two have people from the studio. Just too excited. many people bringing um, this thing together. Uh, it's been so great watching Hogwarts them legacy. through. Through this game director, Alan for this game. And senior environment artist and Hogwarts expert, Boston Madsen. So thank you for, for taking time out of your very busy schedules right now to sit down with us to help us show everybody gameplay. Uh, so what we're going to be showing you today, first, the character creator, because you're, it's your legacy, and <laughs> you have to create yourself when you get into, uh, to, to get into Hogwarts and bring your whole authentic self to Hogwarts. So we're going to show you that character creator. Then we're going to dive into a tour of Hogwarts, and it is... It's just a small tour of Hogwarts, right? Because <laughs> Hogwarts is huge. Hogwarts is really big. Uh, so uh, we're going to be showing you a little bit, but it's still a lot. So, <laughs> and finally, ending up with uh, combat. A little taste of combat, a little taste of how all that works. Oh, um, go, just go. a little taste, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, excited it's a to get huge there. part but again, of this first and foremost, we need So remember, to get definitely into check out this showcase James, if you, you want to see that tour that they We wanted to... Uh, let you create this character. So, Andrew, who is going to be doing all of our gameplay capture today, uh, <laughs> is uh, going to be handing you the controller. Oh my gosh. All right, I won't break anything. <laughs> all right, so what are we looking at right here on this screen? Um, these are your presets. So, okay. So we're going to go over just a little bit of this part. This is called presets um, for those who are brand new gamers because as I've said in the last video, I know there's going to be a, probably a lot of people 
who are going to just do this game and a lot of people that haven't really gamed. So when you come to this menu, just um, this is probably the best for a brand new gamer um, is to pick out a preset. Of course, if you want to get into it and just um, create your character, just, just to tell you, it is very, very detailed. Um, in a lot of these character creators, they have everything from what color you want your hair, the hairstyle, eyebrows, eye structure, nose structure, cheeks, jawbone. I mean, some of these can get very, very, very detailed. So just to tell you, there's those presets there. So you, if you get really overwhelmed, um, just notice like right here up at the top, if you decide, hey, I want to give it a go and just like, I know for myself, I'm definitely going to be making myself Yeah. because I want to see me going through Hogwarts. Um, all you need to do is press that L1 or R1, and on the Xbox and PlayStation controllers, it's those little back buttons above the trigger-like buttons. So they're like the little skinny parts on the back of your controller um, where you can go back and forth. Um, presets are really good to start out with. I remember um, when I first got back into gaming five or six years ago, I definitely uh, picked a preset on Skyrim just because I was getting so overwhelmed with how to create those characters. So just remember that those are there. The presets are pretty good. Um, I've never seen a bad list of presets. So yeah, so we're just going to go ahead and skip to the next part. So that's really the character creation. They go through it, he makes his character, and that's who you're going to be seeing in the next part. He has literally made himself going through Hogwarts. Um, as I said, we're not going to do the tour just because it's very, very long and we're not going to make this video as long as that tour. So we're going to skip ahead. We're going to go to the pause menu. Um, I thought that was a very important part to bring up in this showcase. Um, it's kind of like this found, it's the foundation to, um, to starting to play this game. Let me make sure I get right there. Okay, so you also have your pause menu. It's just, you just press that middle, it's probably gonna be one of the middle buttons on your controllers. Um, it, it'll it definitely show you how to do that. Um, so the pause menu is going to be really important. And as we are looking at the one here, of course I haven't played yet. Can't wait to start, we get to do it in eight days. Uh, so such as here, it looks like this is our level and it's also showing the house. And this is definitely Hufflepuff because of the badger. I wonder if um like that will change like depending on the house. Like, yes, yeah. If, if you're Slytherin, it'll be like green. Yeah, like if gold. it's if it's Slytherin, it'll be a snake. If it's Gryffindor, it'll be the lion. If it's Ravenclaw, it will be that raven. Um so you'll definitely um, have your house represented in your pause screen. I mean, definitely. Um, I can at least infer that that's what's going to happen. <laughs> so it looks like here, this is your level. And it's showing here, like this little part, it's showing like where you are in the level. And I bet that's how you are going to level up. And then over here, it looks like it's our map. Then your quest. Oh, and right here it says no assignments. So I bet that means you have to go and find them or like by talking to people um, or like stumbling across a certain room or a certain part of the map um, to get those quests. And then outpost, not too sure. I mean, it's definitely like has to be messages. Um, I wonder who you would be messaging. I wonder. <laughs> That's. Probably the old Well, maybe, you know, I don't, I don't know about, I, I don't know Probably if they're, online. maybe I don't know if they're doing it online. Um, so we don't know that, but um, Outpost, that's kind of interesting. I wonder what exactly that will entail. Um, oh. Settings, settings for people, um, that's where um, you probably get to save, quit, um change your controller thing um yeah. controller settings around um if you want to yeah um the brightness and stuff that's usually where settings are challenges hmm. and it has a percentage sign so that seems to go a little bit with the quest so challenges are probably the important things that you need to solve 
I'm guessing. Or well, maybe it's a story. Yeah, it might be part of the story. Maybe the challenges in the storyline. Yeah. Um, some main challenges. Or it could be the, like, on how much you progress through. Yeah. And then collections. This is this is also pretty common in uh, in video games where you're, um, it's probably something, th- stuff throughout the map. Like, such as if you play in Red Dead Online, you the collector role, it gives you a list of collections and like you keep them yeah like there's there's also like some collect like um like collecting rare gems or like things like that so that's probably where those go and then talents progress through the main story to unlock so that that has to be a whole um like class classifications of what you'll be able to do which that's going to be really cool i'm just so glad this is so detailed yeah like it's really going to keep you busy um definitely not something to rush over or anything like that this is definitely going to be a very detailed game at least from what we're seeing just from this is just the pause menu um and then inventory that's where you're going to carry all your stuff and you'll click on that and you can go through all the stuff that you have collected I wonder if they're going to have a weight limit. I don't know. Um, a lot of games have weight limits. Um, so if it does, the best way, especially for new gamers, if you suddenly notice you're walking really, really slow and you can't jump, you might be encumbered <laughs> with too much stuff. So, um, but I don't know that. I don't know if they have a weight limit, but when we find out in eight days. Yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah gears well no and then gear that's what you're wearing and I know that stuff will be upgraded because I know they mentioned that a few times about upgrading it so this part looks super exciting excited about this so let's keep it going so let's see what they have to say the developers to it wow that's your wizard's field guide and you can see your house kind of fresh overlaid over it okay Okay. and you can see that on your level as well so that the field guide has this magical property of looking out into the world around you. Mm-hmm. And the reason why it's on loan from the Ministry of Magic and the professors so have cool. granted it to you as a late fifth year student is because they want it to help you catch up to the other kids. Mm-hmm. And its magical property is to discover different opportunities to learn and grow all around you. So the way it works is as you discover gameplay in the game, it actually recognizes that as a challenge, which is kind of on the locked into there. Okay. And Andrew, if you go in there, you'll see different types of challenges that are combat challenges, wow. quest challenges, exploration challenges. challenges. And you can see field guide pages are on there as yeah. well. Yeah. Okay, so I'm so glad he, I forgot that he did that, that he went into that challenge. So the one where it's at the very bottom and um, it showed um, the, the griffin and the yeah, character. Yeah, the griffin and the character, like as if you're on the griffin. And um, it had the percentage. So we're in there and it's showing the different challenges. Um, Such as combat, quest, exploration, field yeah. guide pages, and room of requirements. So it definitely, this is going to be a very detailed game. <laughs> like I have to say, this is very detailed. This this part really reminds me a lot of, of Skyrim, actually. Yeah. In a lot of ways, this is like Skyrim. Um, and I do, I do like that. I definitely love the room of requirement one. So excited about that one. I know Rory, you're excited about the combat one. Very excited. About um, combat. I am definitely intrigued by the field guide pages just to know what exactly we are doing. With I think it. I know what they are. Yeah. They're they're helpful tips. Yeah, probably. But to what? And yeah, so let's let's keep this going. So, one percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, one field page, right? that, that entire category is one of the ways that uh, the book itself kind of fills out into the school and spills out into the school mm-hmm. and kind of hides itself at different types of challenges and different things to do around the school <laughs> that you're that actually going so to cool. interact with to help you grow as a wizard and practice your spells. And so that thing that we just saw is not just a field guide challenge and a way to earn yeah. XP. It's also something that uh, that players can use to learn about the school as they're traveling around. They spot these little secret facts and they can kind of play a little bit of a game discovering all of them. And there, there, there are over 100 field guide pages just in Hogwarts alone. Wow. Little wow. glimpse of the grand staircase yeah. here. Yeah. Not yeah. 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 Circular staircase. All, all the portraits. And I did notice alone. the blue flame just like, ignite right really there, bad. which is so cool. Yeah. Oh, man. Fast travel points there. 
house hour glasses. We had to, I, I, how much fun was it designing those and putting all oh, those in gorgeous, there? But, oh, so I did want to mention this part of the um, Hogwarts tour. So um, these are um, your hourglasses for each house, um, almost like your point system. I'm not too sure how detailed they have gotten on I, If they've gotten this detailed on the Hosman, I guarantee you that that is very detailed. Like if you skip I, class or you do something bad, I'm guessing you know, it goes up and down. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, it, it will be able to check it out. Um, it looks like, so there's green, that's probably Sly Slytherin, huh. blue, Ravenclaw, um, this orange gold is definitely Gryffindor, and then, um, this red Hufflepuff, um, oh, I so think I know what it is, the different, it's the, for the different, it's for the house points, yeah, but I know, I think I know what it has to do, so in Red Dead, there's an honor system between if you're, like, a good person or a bad person. I bet you it's like Red Dead where it's like an honor system, except it's for your house. So it's like it whether your house is good or it's bad. It it might it it might be. I mean, yeah, I definitely wanted to point that out. Like that is how detailed they have gotten that I don't know if I if I was a part of developing it, I would have even thought about like putting up the the house point hourglasses. So they definitely have... They went through the books. Yeah, they have really went through. They went through the lore, and it, it's just going to be really cool. So from this point, we are going to go to the part with the classes. Um, we're going to go straight to that part. And this is one of the parts I'm super pumped about. Classes, I really hope they did this well. Um... We're going to see what they have to say, and then we're going to discuss it. Classes work, because we've gotten a lot of questions about that. Is it mm. a schedule-based system? Is mm. it to, to tell us how classes work? Yeah, so um, ultimately you decide not to go the sim route. So I think, like, one of the speculations was, is there time of day? And, you know, that kind of thing. Like, can I miss class at this yeah. time of day? There is a day-night cycle. Yeah, yeah there is a day-night cycle, but, uh, but everything is very um, narrative-based. And so... There's a big mystery going on in the world. There's something happening in the narrative, and we, and we essentially see it as kind of like chapters in that narrative, each chapter of which has a set of missions that you can choose between as you're progressing through the game, and classes fit within that structure. Mm -hmm. So there are mainline things that the players have to do, and then classes also appear on the sides as well as optional things that help you advance your spells. It's absolutely true that classes provide all of your major tools throughout the gameplay, your spells, your major abilities, you get to know the professors, each one of them has these bespoke uh, kind of events yeah, and moments yeah, in those missions, yeah. and then there are also additional opportunities outside of that through kind of like side classroom missions essentially, where you can learn additional spells or things that you need in your adventure and also get to know the professors better. And I just want to call out something that, that Andrew's been kind of showing off, uh, ways to kind of interact with the environment and just, just uh, engage with the world and, you know, maybe down there he's sipping some tea yeah. with uh, <laughs> <I love> it. <laughs> Victorian high school. So from what I definitely got when watching this showcase about the classes, um, it will not be on a schedule, like they won't have you on a schedule, like where you um, get in trouble for skipping class, but it is very obvious, and I did know this, that you do have to go to certain classes to gain certain skills, certain upgrades, and to be able to go through certain parts of the main storyline. You know, I So wonder, you definitely don't want to avoid class, like, the whole time. I wonder, and they probably had this, where it's like when you choose your difficulty, so, like, normal, it's like, you know, you... They have no schedule, but I wonder if it's like if you go into like the harder ones, yeah. you have a schedule. Maybe I, I mean I I don't know about that, but they were pretty pretty set on that it won't be on a schedule, but you do have to attend certain classes to move forward. Um, I and I can see why. I mean, with the with the way this is like an open world game, I yeah. I think that would be really hard to um, create that kind of algorithm. Um, and that it might get super glitchy um, on that. So, but I'm really hoping these classes are good um, because once you attend them, that's what I'm really looking at is when you go into those classrooms, are these going to be good classes? Because <laughs> that was one of the things I was a little bit like Hermione in the books where I'm like, yeah, I would have been at every single class. 
<laughs> like definitely <laughs> that would be so much fun so moving on from there rory's going to take over talking about the combat because that is definitely his part he's going to be the one um who has really looked at the details about combat and things like that so i'm going to take a little bit of a back seat on this part Of them. Let me know. And this is a really good opportunity to now jump into combat because really in the game this is going to be uh, the first time where you yourself get to learn about combat and combos in a big way and in a so, new way. Uh, for me personally, this like is where the game like, really starts to open up to the possibilities. Uh, it's probably yeah. that. So we set up a we set up a training dummy and this is kind of an activity where you're, you're supposed to execute according to kind of the iconography on the top. Now, uh, uh, what we see on the top is the Accio spell space tech, space followed by tech, space four tech. what we just kind of lovingly Those refer to as basic yeah. shots. Uh, <laughs> so is there spells like a certain place where kind of you know, just kind of play like, Andrew's using one now? How, like, and how you do trigger it? that like, by tapping R2 at? on well, your controller, so you can see R2 in the corner R2. Is how you so if you tap R2, that spell. throws out a basic shot. I'm but guessing that R2 is also your gateway to all of the on uh, how you spells that you might slot. So if you hold R2 like instead, you can see if how... You notice, like, if you see down, uh, if you look, like, where it's, like, marked, and then if you look a little bit there, where the mouse is... <laughs> He hits R1, and then it's a little base attack. So, yeah, and as they continue to use those base attacks and um, all that, I'm guessing what's also going to happen, if you look down here, the he's hitting R2, so it's like square, X, circle, and triangle. I wonder if the combat will be medium, fast, or slow with that, since it's like, you know, you have to hit tons of buttons at the same time. For beginners, oh, it the diamond works. expands, and if we let go, you see how it contracts? Yeah. And so and if you remember, hold it again, um, it expands. If you do pick and so when it expands, and all the spells that you've slotted, it, while you're holding that button, can now be tapped combat. with your face so button. So do keep that in mind. If you're really that, not over the course of the game, for combat, you can always pick storyline um, where it just takes you to through the story. You don't have to do combat. You can slot up to 16 spells. If you are interested in it, you've never done combat, but you want to do it, I would pick easy. Fulfill the fantasy of in combat, I need to be able to access things very rapidly. Yeah. And and so you learn over the course of these events, you know, how to juggle not just the spell casting, but also it reinforces um, an understanding of like another right feature there, of the wheel, which is there. He put him in the air and then started hitting base attack, base attack, base attack. So more likely, um, when he's talking about like base attack, if you had seen in this corner of Chris right now, it's disappeared at the moment. Um, that will be hitting like your the X or the circle or the square. Um, that's what it's showing. And that goes with your controller, which are going to be um, on that front part um, over on the on your right hand. Um, and those will be right there in uh, like a four square. Which I'll definitely be going into my settings to flip those because I'm used to hitting for like a special attack. I'm used to hitting R1 and then clicking a button, not R2 and then clicking a button. R2 is my base attack. Yeah. And then up here, what do you think? What is this showing us, so, especially for new gamers? It's showing up here. So, like, you see, that's a special spell. That's what you're using. You use the special spell, and then... Why do they have a check mark? Because um, it means that you've done that spell. You've done... And it's worked. Yeah, and okay. it's worked. And then it's like, you know, those little stars that are the base attacks. Okay, so we're thinking those are the basic spell attacks? Okay. Yeah. So, as he said, yeah that those check marks is showing that hey you hit the target or the, the spell, spell has at least worked um and then as you can see there's lots of little hints everywhere i know for new gamers it's very overwhelming like i remember when i played fallout 4 <laughs> even though it does have all these like easy little combo things when you're a brand new gamer you're like ah. so just remember take a breath and just look around <laughs> Um, especially in, especially do the training rings if you're brand new to combat. Just gonna skip ahead to this part. 
So I mean, apparently yeah, you've uh, got quite the reputation because they've got you up against yeah. So they were just yeah. in a, like a jump. training ring. Yeah. yeah, and that was like a training double. Um, so I can, I can explain this uh, yeah. just because so I know people NBC's, are going to go into it, but we can probably just kind of jump in. Um, so it looks like... So, uh, okay, so... You're not the R3, which is your uh, uh, your stick, so you're holding it. This is how you move around and all that. Click R3. So you're Click clicking it. the joystick yes. down. You're clicking it down. It will walk onto the target, and using that exact same joystick, you are moving it, and it is switching between the targets. Yeah. You're not the only one that has Protego and the ability to deflect. Enemies do, too. And it looks and like they have shields, which I guess that so is going to So you notice that there are different colors, shield kind shield of like, shields yeah. on the different characters. And you also notice that your spells have and different it looks colors like you on them. And so also to help players understand kind of like the function shit. of their spells, we're yeah. trying to put them into brackets. So there are damage spells, so, there are force spells. If you notice, whenever she hit him, and I bet you can do this, whenever she cast that spell, he deflected it so it went back but in a random direction. So I'm guessing if someone will shoot a spell and if there's someone next to you, you deflect it, it'll hit them and do the exact same thing. Oh, that's kind of, that's actually kind of cool if that's yeah. how that works. work. Yeah, that, that's pretty cool. And I bet with the upgrades, it makes it easier to break certain wizards' shields and yeah. stuff. So that's just my guess. Also, there are, um, forgetting the other one, all of a sudden, control like spells. Mm -hmm. So those things for the player, yeah. they wind up also being a color indicator for which, which actual spell to use to break the different shields. So it looks like you can also get hit by almost kind of like your own spells, like you know, on how he um, levitated someone or made someone levitate. Um, it looks like that girl also made him levitate using that exact same spell. So it looks like you can also basically get hit by your own spell. Okay. That uh, enemies can use. That's that awesome. way it rewards kind of like that close right. attention that right. you're paying. Hey, and we've, on things. we've got this paused here now, and you can kind of see all the elements on the screen. The, the halo oh, actually around the, the avatar's halo. head, yeah. each of the different shields uh, to kind of give us a, give us a breakdown yeah, what's give going us a on. Breakdown, different things that you're saying. <laughs> um, so you notice at the top uh, that we're we're kind of like calling out which enemy you currently have targeted and yeah. their level and health. And so you know, as you target different characters, you'll be able to get that. But um, that's all I have to say about combat. Okay. Yeah, and they go more into detail on um, certain things. Of course, there will be more to learn about it. Um, just from what I was seeing, as you're going through the map, you get brand new spells, you learn um, different defense mechanisms, you can even use magical creatures in combat, which is, is pretty cool. So, and I, this part they've really thought out too. So it's definitely, there's definitely something for every type of gamer. Um, there's definitely combat for the go combat gamers like yeah. Rory. There's definitely the story story and micromanagement for the gamers like me. Um, but I'm definitely going to be trying out the combat. I definitely, I'm definitely going to do it because I definitely want to um, see where it goes. I am getting a little bit more into it now that I'm gaming a little more. Um, it's, it's still not my, my thing, but... Um, Definitely with the wands and stuff, it, I'll definitely be pretty heavy on that, I think, as well. So let's go to the conclusion to see how they wrap up. And then we'll wrap up ourselves. Yeah. That's going to be really cool the way that everybody brings those things together. All right. And that's everything that we have to show you today. I know maybe it wasn't everything you wanted to see but it was a whole lot of stuff character creator uh, a little mini tour of hogwarts there just a small part of it a little bit of combat um and we've we do have some more stuff coming up for you in the future hogwarts legacy releases on february 10th 2023 and is available for pre-order now uh but that's going to do it from us we're going to leave you with a little something else but for now uh bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs>
going around on TikTok. I bet we'll find out. <laughs>